Good afternoon, my name is Jim Conlon and welcome to the latest episode of our entertainment show. As you know, we've been running and previewing on air for the upcoming past month or so about our new documentary as another game we're delving back into the game fighting series sort of franchise. Previously, we've done documentaries on Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. Our Mortal Kombat documentary was voted the best docu- new do- Mortal Kombat documentary in the past 20 years. Uh, featured numerous actors from Michael J. White um, to uh, Joel McHale to numerous uh, actors that have played characters in Mortal Kombat from all the movies like Chris Casamassa down to the year. So we're delighted to premiere our new documentary. It's Tekken documentary. And so far, we've spoken to a number of actors who have appeared in the Tekken movie and the gaming sort of movie and voiceovers as well. I'm delighted to be joined this evening by one of the original pioneers of the Tekken sort of franchise back when it was in the day, early days of the PlayStation and Xbox. She voiced over some of the most prominent roles in terms of the fighters within the Tekken industry. The one and only Liesl uh, Wilkerson. Uh, Liesl um, voiced the roles of Nina Williams and not only one, the only one and only Chrissy Montero as we know, was played by Kelly Overton in the Tekken movie in 2011. So, Lisa, can I ask you, obviously, a renowned voiceover actress as yourself, in terms yes. of Tekken, when it came to your doorstep back in 2001, I believe, was the first Tekken uh, for, uh, mo- yeah. you know, game for you, Tekken 4 in 2001, back around the year of sort of... Uh, 9-11 and sort of such how did it start to come to you in terms of Tekken at your sort of doorstep had you met many years in the industry at that stage in terms of voiceovers and had you done similar sort of fighting sort of game sort of roles and in terms of the audition process was this something that you sort of knew or heard about the script or was it very still hush hush um, so when I was auditioning for Tekken, I have been, so first of all, I got my roles in Japan because I was working in Japan. I grew up okay. and was working in radio in Japan for quite a few years. Um, that led to me getting a lot of voiceover opportunities with uh, some, you know, big agencies in Tokyo. And one of the agencies was doing a lot of work with video games. Um, And they're the ones that brought me in for Tekken. Um, They also brought me in for, you know, some other stuff like Virtua Fighter and, you know, other, you know, um, I consider kind of retro, you know, iconic titles. But Tekken, um, yeah, the audition process, was very similar to how things were done in Japan back in the day where you have an agent and you give them your demo tape. This just dates me right here because of course nowadays people don't even use cassette tapes, but back then it was a demo tape and our agent would send it out to the game company or whatever. And then they would, you know, sift through all the tapes, listen to them, and then figure out which voices they thought best matched the ones that they were looking, you know, the characters that they were looking for. So that was how I got my first role, which was, you know, Nina Williams. Um, Kind of a funny thing, though, about Nina is back then, I was also doing a lot of boxing, um, you know, for working out and whatnot. And I was working out with a trainer. And I still remember when I went in to record for Nina for the lines that I had just finished doing a boxing session, right? So I show up on my really cool dirt bike that I had in Tokyo that was like leopard print and red, you know, it was just it was like a really cool bike that I shuttled around all over Tokyo. And then I also had these big leopard print gloves that were like thrown around my shoulder. So I walk into this, I'm walking to the studio. And just as I'm walking in, the people from Namco Bandai were arriving to do the session with me, right? And I remember that th- when I walked in, they're like, oh, Lisa-san, you were like Nina-san. And they were they just thought that was the funniest thing. Um, but that kind of really started my, um, what I like to call my fighting girls 
uh, era, you know, like starting to work with Tekken and other, you know, fighting games as well. But um, Tekken, of course, has always been a very special one for me just because one, there's so many people that love the game. Um, there are a lot of people that Tekken is, is their childhood, you know, like they played it, they went to the arcade. And so for me, that's kind of a very special experience. Um, so yeah, I'm super proud to be a part of the Tekken franchise. Absolutely. Yeah. And Liesl, in terms of the characters, obviously there were animated sort of drawings at the time. As a voiceover <laughs> actor, do you have to, in terms of getting a uh, partake on a, a certain sort of character, is it very important that you see all those images, those still graphics in terms of a, a sort of projection, what the character wears, the colors and that, to give you a nice sort of idea how you want to project that sort of voice or the project that sort of background where do you have to put a bit of tone or a rasp in your voice or a sort of a sort of sexiness or a sort of a yeah. even sort of is, is that do you go by the sort of drawings early back then is was that the big thing for you when you can and I think that's another thing that probably is very different from first of all from how things are done nowadays but when you are doing the voice acting in Japan, sometimes the drawings are not finished, right? Okay. So there have been quite a few times where I just kind of have to go by what the director tells me they're looking for. Uh, so usually what happens, the process, and this would be probably with all my games, but usually, I mean, tech in, you know, it's been established for a while. So I did know what Nina looked like and she was my first character. So, um, and they had an idea of what quality they were looking for, the sound. So, you know, like the low rasp, whatever, um, you know, what, what would happen. And this was with Christy Montiero as well, where um, I went into the studio and then gave them several voices and then they're like, okay, that's the one we want. And then we just went with that and then continued. Um, you know, it's not, sometimes depending on the director, you're able to have a say in what you think the voice should be, but usually they're the ones that know what they want and they want you to deliver that, right? So I try, you know, I try to be as directable as possible and, um it's usually a process it's like it's you know you try to figure it out is you know well, how about this voice and they're like no 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 a little bit too a little bit lower so I'm like okay and then I do a few more and then they're like okay yeah that's what we want so yeah it's so it's kind of a process for sure um I do love having drawings obviously because you get a better understanding of what the character's like um you know what they look like and their movements and whatnot um so yeah and I suppose Liesl starting off back in 2001 obviously the animated sort of stories around those games was a sort of yeah. little it was more about the sort of fighting and as we know as the backstories went on with the years went on obviously the animated story became more and more to the point where it was almost like a film like if you take out some of the cuts if you take out some of the fighting scenes uh, in terms of YouTube, and you just watch the cut animated scenes of, say, some of the new Tekkens or Mark Combat, they go on for like three hours in terms of the, mm -hmm. the sort of the sort of story, sort of back thing. So starting off in 2001, in terms of shooting, in terms of production, where the, could you go in there and say, vice the, the Liesl, vice the role of Nina Williams in two or three days in terms of that? and wrap up in terms of production. But as the years went on, did they become longer and longer? No, it tends to be with video games. I usually find we finish in a day. So we do everything, all the voices, like all the attacks, um, everything is usually done within a day, like half a day. So we just spend five or six hours, just knocking it out. I think the only one, and this would go with a lot of other video games I've done as well. I think the only one that really went on for a very long time would probably be the Shenmue franchise when I was a part of that. Um, 
And that went on for maybe a month, month and a half. But uh, video games tend to be actually quite quick when you're doing the voices for video games. Um, you usually get a list of what they want from you. The, you know, unless once more, unless it's more like a Shamu style video game. Um, usually they are very, yeah, it's it's very quick in finishing the recording. And I suppose some of the catchphrases for those characters, uh, do they always sort of stick with you in terms of uh, uh, going forward as you sort of hear a particular word or hear and you start to, that rings a bell or that sort of, you can't yeah. not think of that word, but think of that sort of person, no matter where you are or no matter who mentions that word to you, you might be in a cafe sitting down with friends and someone mentions, uh, so in a normal conversation through where your head goes, Nina, Chrissy, because that word sort of strikes that sort of nerve with you in terms of remembrance of their character. Yeah, especially because there's some lines like, um, like the one with Nina, where she's like, she's like, um, isn't it past your bedtime? Which, you know, all parents say to their kids all the time. So when I hear that, I'm like, ooh, that's a Nina line. Um but yeah, no, absolutely. There, there are a lot of lines. And I really like how, you know, with Christy, she's got her own individual personality and style and character that's very different from Nina. Um, I think that personally, I might be, I would probably say some of the ones I think that Nina says, like, I, maybe I have like a similarity to her character in many ways. Um, but I think, yeah, like I sometimes hear some of the lines. I'm like, oh, yes, I know that line. That sounds familiar. And I just actually got back from Saudi Arabia. I was at a big Comic-Con there. Um, and Saudi Arabia is a huge country for Tekken. Like a lot of the people there grew up with Tekken. And I can't tell you how many times I had people come up to me when I was at my booth and they're like, time to die. I'm like, Ooh, I know that lie, you know? So that was a lot of fun, you know? And we would, you know, do like, they would bring their um, camera and then we do video where we both do the same thing. And, you know, they'd be like, time to die, you know? Um, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, I think that a lot of the lines are great, iconic, fun, sometimes cheeky, um, but I always like to call them, I, I don't know if I can say it, so I, I like to call them badass, my badass fighting girls, because I think they're all super fabulous and awesome, and um, it's just a real honor to be a part of it. And I suppose, Liesl, uh, I suppose in terms of the run-up then to the big Tekken movie that came out in uh, 2010, yeah, uh, yeah. in terms of the producers and the directors obviously doing the research and looking back at the old sort of Tekken games and the video games. But they, yeah. Did anyone make contact with you in terms of some of the characters, in terms of maybe actually helping out the actresses that would play the role in terms of your sort of thoughts and the character and how you sort of voiced them and how maybe that you could give them in, uh, insights in, in terms of maybe when they're sort of casting who they wanted in the sort of movies or, or did anyone sort of reach out and just ask in terms of research in terms of looking back on Tekken when they were making the movie um they didn't reach out um I was actually kind of going for my own per personal voyage where I had been in Japan for th almost 30 years and then I moved here to the U.S. Um, so I wasn't I was just getting adjusted to life in L.A. Um, and meanwhile, at the same time, I believe that was also when Tekken was making the change from casting and doing a lot of the voices in Japan to bringing it to the U.S. and doing a lot of the casting here. Um, so I kind of feel like we were actually making personal journeys, the game Tekken, and I were around the same time. But um, usually I think when they do projects where, you know, it's obviously affiliated with the video game and there's the characters and a lot of the story are very similar to the game or come from the game. But 
a lot of times when it's a movie or if it's a TV show or something like that, they will use, a lot of times they want to use a very different cast. Um, and they also use a very different group of people in creating the show or the film. Um, so I don't know if that's what happened, but no, I was not asked to be a part of it. Um, I did watch it though. There was an event not too long after the tech end film came out or movie came out and I got to watch it with some friends of mine and you know it was it was interesting to see I was like oh there she is there is Nina or you know um so it was cool it was cool to watch the movie uh, but unfortunately I wasn't a part of it and Lisa, when you saw the sort of romantic scenes between Chrissy Montero and Jin and her outfit and the sort of character, and obviously that's sort of different than so obviously you're portraying these sort of fighting scenes and fighting emotions, were you sort of yeah. amazed by seeing the character sort of backstories in terms of the movie, especially Chrissy, who had Chrissy who had a big sort of massive backstory in that sort of movie. She was upright and center in terms of one of the main uh, sort of stars along with Jin in terms of that movie. Did that catch you by surprise in terms of how they put a huge, more of a backstory to her rather than someone like Nina? Or yeah, her? yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, yeah, I, she, Christy is, um, I'm, yeah, I mean, like when I do any character that I do, I never get to really see a soft romantic side to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So something like that is kind of weird to, to see, you know, it's almost it's almost like, oh, yeah, because I guess that would happen because, you know, I mean, she's human in the mood, you know, so of course yeah. she would have feelings for someone or something. Um, it's just for me, it's kind of weird because I just always come mostly from that whole you know, like strong fighter um, spirit, but then also obviously there's a lot of vulnerability and there is with every character I've done. And so seeing something like that, where it's like, ooh, lovey, lovey. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, that was different. But yeah, I, I like seeing that kind of stuff too, though. Yeah. And Lisa Din, obviously, in 2012, uh, Street Fighter versus Tekken, the uh, Vita, yeah. the animated series, came, came out. Obviously, then you got to voice uh, 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 Chrissy Montero in, in terms of a cartoon at animated series. Was that exciting? Was that sort of different challenge? You're gone from the one line sort of words now to sort of a team, a plot, a beginning, a middle, a sort of end. And how did this ob obviously the definition of horror character must have complete, changed completely then from what the video games in terms of uh, it was more story orientated. Yeah, no, that was really wonderful. I really loved doing that and being a part of that. Um, the guy who was in charge of casting for that um, actually reached out to me because he knew that I'd done some work with Tekken. And so um, it was a lot of fun because I also got to have a little bit of say in some of the lines, which was always a great thing when you can do that. Usually as a voice actor, you're only relegated to coming in and giving the director whatever performance they want with the lines that are already there, right? So you don't really have very much say, but um, with that, there was actually almost a bit of a process where he would he would ask me, so how would you word this if Lisa, if this were you? And I would give him like a couple versions and then, you know, we would um, record those. So that was a really cool project to be a part of. Hmm. And one thing I noticed, is, and I've spoken to an awful lot of stunt men and stunt actors who have played yeah. uh, roles uh, within these sort of movies and franchise, and they're sort of open to the possibilities of, if for them stunt roles the fighting games they grew up with so for them it doesn't matter if they were part of one of the, the big games so we have the three big iconic games we have Capcom that started out with Street Fighter then we have uh, Nether Realms uh, which uh, and Ed Boom which started Mortal Kombat and then we've Namco with uh, Tekken so some of those uh, stuntmen they don't obviously mind uh 
uh, doing sort of roles of different characters, different ninjas or different actors within the sort of... But as vice over actors, when you're like, you given your history now with Tekken and obviously you're based in Los Angeles and Tekken's moved over there. But uh, let's say if a new street, uh, uh, street Fighter game came out or a new Mortal Kombat game came out, would you always see yourself, well, the character base, the fan base has seen me associated with Tekken that they would recognize my voice if I was in Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter or do you think it was do you actually see when I'm part of the Tekken franchise now they're, they're the sort of rival do you sort of look at it as friend and sort of vote where you think of oh no I'm not mm-hmm. a Mortal Kombat girl I'm a Tekken girl and sort of stuff like that is there a bit of that within the industry when you're attached to it for so long or is it just you think well uh, this is my niche I'm, I've am i been able to voice over in uh, in uh, Tekken so obviously Mark Comet similar Street Fighter similar if the opportunities came about no doubt about it I, I go for them straight away you think to yourself no I can't do that I'd be betraying my Tekken sort of fan base <laughs> that's actually a good question and I'm a little bit up in the air about that because quite honestly I feel like the video games that I'm a part of that some of them are, you know, I consider them to be pretty iconic and super fabulous and really just very, very honored to be a part of um, Tekken being one, Virtua Fighter being another, which I really loved being a part of, and then Shenmue for a very different reason. And then also even like a game like Crazy Taxi, which is also iconic for very different reasons. But um, yeah, I don't know if I think it's a combination of things. I think it's one, maybe I'm getting a little bit older to where I want to do different things now too, but I do feel some satisfaction now. And I do, I definitely feel like a tech end girl for sure, because super proud of that franchise. So would I be in a different game? Maybe. But I might also not just because I like the games that I've been in and that I feel like they're great representations of me. And so I've kind of, you know, morphed and or whatever, you know, I, I constantly, I try to always be growing like work-wise personally and I feel like, okay, I've done that part, love that part of my life, but I want to do some other things. I want to challenge myself in other ways. And so there is a part of me that, you know, might be like, no, I think I'm good. I think what I've done, I think the the games that I'm associated with, I'm pretty proud of and I'm sticking to those. So I'm not sure. I don't know how to answer that question. It might be I'm a Tekken girl and only a Tekken girl. It might be, oh, Street Fighter. I'm right over here. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, Lisa, in terms of uh, looking at some sort of the movies and sort of such in terms of branching off, and obviously Tekken is so uh, bedded with the Nishima characters and uh, the sort of background in terms of that, and Jin Nishima and Jun Nishima. But sometimes yeah. when you look at some of those other characters, you think to yourself, well, like like in terms of taking the Brian Fury, uh, the Sergei Dragunov, the, the Rojo, that there's opportunities for sort of a spin-off to look at different characters or even do sort of an anime or a web series uh, in terms of looking at uh, away from the Nishimas and the sort of central point in terms of the other characters' journeys and sort of backstories. But do you think all this, that it'll be always focused around that sort of Nishima angle uh, in terms of the Tekken name? Or do you think it's a case where maybe there's opportunities but it will be called something else apart from Tekken? If they were used something, um, I I have no idea. I don't really know what. Um, I I don't I don't know. I mean, is there opportunities for something like that to like branch out and have it be tech end characters, but have their own story, mm-hmm. their own or- origin story? That I think there's absolutely opportunities for that. I just don't know if Namco Bandai 
is interested in doing something like that, but I think they're absolutely, it could be. I mean, when you think about some of the characters, like there's so many interesting characters in a tech end game, in my opinion, um, just brand, I mean, you know, like Bob, like I'm like, Bob, he just, I mean, it's uh, sometimes it, it just- Yoshi Mitsu was the- Yes, I who's love- Who's behind the mask. Love. Yes, Yoshi Mitsu is fabulous. And they have, and you can tell like they've not only got obviously their own unique style personality to them, but also their tricks and what, you know, all the things that they do and all the accessories that kind of come with them are very individualized. So is there room to have something that is related to Tekken, but not called Tekken? Absolutely. I think totally. Um, and there's a lot of great characters. There's a lot of wealth of characters in there and material that you could use. Um, I just don't know if Namco Bandai would do something like that, but yeah, absolutely. I suppose, Lisa, the big question for you now, back in around 2001, in terms of Halloween, in terms of fancy dress, did you get out the sort of Nina Williams outfit each year or uh, the Chrissy Montero and turn up at these sort of friends of house parties dressed up and who's Lisa going to turn up at this year? Is it going to be Christy or, or is it going to be Nina? Is that, was, that was always the big question. And did you find the outfits to be able to squeeze into those tight sort of latex? Was it challenging or yeah. no way <laughs> but I did what's really funny about this is when I first moved to the states um I think I mentioned that I was doing a lot of boxing right so yeah. as exercise and I was doing it with a trainer so a personal trainer however because of my work with video games and specifically tech in um I actually decided to volunteer myself to be in an MMA fight. I'd never been in, I'm not a fighter. I'm not a boxer. I'm not, I mean, I, but it's the most bizarre story. And it's one of the craziest things I've ever done. And I, I lived in grew, I grew up and lived in Japan. So I've done a lot of crazy things, but um, so even though, I haven't dressed up as Tekken or as Nina and Christy for Halloween. I have gone in the ring and fought against someone who was an actual fighter. She was a kickboxer. I came to the match as a boxer, totally didn't know what I was doing. And I actually did that. So I think that's pretty awesome. Um, so that's kind of close to Halloween, but it wasn't Halloween. Um, and I wasn't supposed to win. It was a rigged fight. It was a fixed fight, but you know, I mean, still I got hurt very, very badly on my, you know, my thigh and my calf area. She kept kicking me and kicking me and kicking me. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I'm done with this woman. Um, so now I know the feeling of being Christy or Nina and getting your butt kicked, you know, because I've actually been there. So, and Liesl, the final question, Liesl Wilkerson, before I let you go, uh, let's pretend there was an encyclopedia of Tekken of all the sort of fictional characters that played down through the years. And we'll just give you one character now. Uh, and we'll, we'll go with Chrissy, uh, Chrissy Montero. And that was sort of put in the sort of dictionary, a uh, sort of such. And under her uh, sentences, her synopsis, uh, two blank sentences were left to describe the character. Having voiced or having portrayed or have been so linked with her throughout the years, how would you like those two sentences to read to describe uh, Christy Montero? I think one would be, don't underestimate. Two would be, she's about to get you. And the reason they say don't underestimate is I do a panel where I button mash. I'm a terrible, terrible gamer. I button mash tech in against tech in fans, right? So I go to a lot of anime conventions and this is one of the panels I do. And, you know, I find personally that Nina, when I button mash her, I can sometimes win. Christy, on the other hand, 
is a very complex character and really hard. For me, it's really hard to play, but she's really hard, I think, to beat. And I think that, me, yeah, I feel like sometimes she kind of gets miss. She doesn't get as much respect as she should get. And so I say, do not underestimate Christy. She will kick your butt. That's what I would say. <laughs> On that uh, note of strong uh, womanhood, uh, Liesl Wilkerson, absolute pleasure for joining us this evening to portray your memories of the Tekken Empire. Obviously, you've been there since, what, oh, 21 years and going at uh, this straight now in terms of your involvement uh, with Tekken. Numerous games uh, throughout the years, Tekken 4, Tekken 5, Tekken 6, uh, dating up to Tekken 7 in 2017, 2015, uh, and still ongoing at uh, this uh, present day in terms of, of further involvement in the Tekken. Obviously, it voiced uh, it's tech Street Fighter versus Tekken Vita, the anime series appear uh, <coughs> in three episodes also as well. Lisa Wilkinson, thanks for sharing your memories. You will always be associated as Nina Williams, as Christy Montero in Tekken. It's always a special place to your heart and uh, hopefully many more opportunities to come within the franchise in the future as well. Lisa, take you. care. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, James. I appreciate it.